I was talking to one of your close friends the other day who said uh, about you, Jack couldn't get himself to stop working if he wanted to. Why do you keep working? I enjoy it. You know, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm pretty loyal to my people. People who work for me have been with me for a lot of years. Uh, probably maybe a little, to a fault. Uh, a lot of people uh, take the Jack Welsh approach of firing, you know, 10% of his people every year. I just don't, I've just never believed in that, although he's probably right. Uh, my feeling is I've just been loyal to my people and, and uh, during the economy, uh, when the economy dropped and fell off the face in about 2007, uh, I just didn't think during that next five years that uh, everybody got a very fair shake. So I just, I want to make sure they get a fair shake. And so I enjoyed uh, being part of trying to recover my own business, figure out ways that uh, uh, my business be successful other than being a golf course design business. I mean, certainly it's not going to be a business because I play golf anymore. But uh, uh, it's been fun. It's been, it's been enjoyable. One of the kind of key moments early on in your business's growth was mid-80s. Uh, I think your young CFO comes in for a meeting with you where he thinks it's actually to resign. Um, tell about what actually happened though in that meeting. We had a time back in the mid 80s that um, I, was, I was playing too much golf and not playing enough business I suppose. But I, you know, you, you, you have people that run your business and you let them run your business. And uh, anyway, I ended up with uh, well over $100 million of completion contracts that I had to do that I had committed for and there's no way in the world that those projects were going to, were going to yield that or anything else. So it was a great learning lesson, uh, but it was a lot of millions of dollars of learning, learning to get there. What do you think was the most challenging part for you of that period? Oh, the most challenging part was is, is I was a golfer, and I really didn't have, I'd never been in any kind of a situation like that, and I didn't know where to go. But uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, not, it was not, not a pleasant time, but then that was right around the time of the Masters in 86. Right. And everybody kept uh, saying, oh, how can you play golf with all this hanging over your head? And I said, hey, that's what I do is play golf. And so uh, I've never let uh, business bother what I did on the outside. Uh, uh, I always felt like uh, uh, you know, if I treated people right and I did what I thought was the right thing, it would all come out in the end. Uh, I think that uh, uh, some of that stuff I would have been uh, uh, financially a lot better off today if some of that stuff hadn't happened, but uh, it happened. And uh, when it happened, uh, you know, you, you do the make the best out of it as you, as you can. And it's a great learning experience it's as not well. A, yeah, not a learning experience you'd like to right. have, but, it's a, but it was a great learning experience. What do you think you learned from it? I learned that if I'm going to get myself involved in, in, in things that are involved with a lot of money, and I better know what's going on. I mean, it was a, a, basically I built two golf courses, but these two particular golf courses, we took a larger stake in it as a company. Uh, probably shouldn't have. The economy at the time didn't, didn't fare very well. And as a result, uh, the projects didn't do particularly well. Actually, both projects are very successful today. But that was, that's always, the second owner always gets a nice shot. <laughs> right. Uh, the the uh, Great Recession, during that period, the U.S. US golf course design business just kind of came to a halt, I think, predating that. <clears throat> 500 courses annually in the U.S. were being built. Oh, yeah. Design, I think, pre-recession was, golf course design was 80% of your business. Now marketing makes up as much as 50% of the business. Uh, probably even more. What do you think made you recognize, uh, you know, at that point that you needed to look into other areas of business? Well, I think that if you look at what happened, I go back to 2007, I believe it was, when I, I, I sold 49% of my company to Howard Milstein and the Immigrant Bank and uh, brought Howard in and at that point in time, uh, that's when the bank problems occurred and everything went south. Um, I, at that time, we were, uh, we were doing a, a fairly large number of golf courses at the time, so we were, which we just talked about. And the, um, uh, it just dried up. 
And so we said, well, what is the future of this company? I mean, I used to go to the golf course. I played golf. I came back. I made a name. Uh, you know, I got uh, people wanted me to do their golf course. That was nothing but smiles on the face. And then, 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 then all of a sudden, I said, well, I got to do something else. So uh, I started. I've been for the last couple of years or so. I've been uh, going to see CEOs or, or of, of this company, these companies, different companies of different kinds of things, which has been which has been a, a very has been a great learning experience, and it's been and it's been fun to do. I've gotten myself involved in in in, in uh, uh, going to sell ice cream and uh, and it's having a lot of success. Oh yeah, I know. I, <laughs> that, that's what's right here right now. That cost me twenty pounds. Yeah, right.